El universo empezó siendo muy pequeño, muy caliente. When the universe began, it was very small, very hot, and very homogeneous. That is to say, matter was distributed in such a manner that there was the same density everywhere, the same quantity of matter, but only approximately the same. In some regions, there was a little bit more than in others. And with a process that is called gravitational instability, what happens is that when you have an area in which you have a little bit more matter, that area attracts still more matter from the regions around it. And the more matter you attract, the stronger the gravity of the region, so that it attracts even more matter. That is to say, it's a process that refuels itself, so that more matter attracts more matter, and so on. It just keeps growing. So that what began by being some microscopic fluctuations in the universe's matter has grown during the entire life of the universe until today. And as these small fluctuations grew, they joined with other regions which also grew in the same way. And they ended up forming the quantities or the agglomerations of matter that today make up the galaxies. Nothing is static in the universe. Everything always turns around something. If the planets revolve around a star, the stars, grouped among themselves, revolve around a center of the galaxy where a great number of stars accumulates. But on many occasions, cosmologists have observed that the density of the matter that is seen in the galaxies is not sufficient to keep the stars together gravitationally by themselves alone. This has led scientists to deduce that there is a force of gravity of an unknown origin that seems to be determining the movement of the stars. This mysterious force is known as dark matter, a kind of energy mass that is not visible or detectable, at least for human beings, and that surprisingly could constitute 95% of the universe. What might a matter of which there is no physical evidence and whose existence is known only through logical deduction be made out of? The atoms that we and the Earth and the stars are made of are actually less than 5% of all the stuff in the universe. The other 95% is in some more exotic form. Quite a lot of it is in so-called dark matter, particles probably left over from the Big Bang, which don't shine and don't interact with anything else but exert a gravitational pull. So we have three kinds of energy and matter in the universe. We have the ordinary atoms, we have dark matter, and we have dark energy in empty space. Discovering the composition of this dark matter is one of the central problems of cosmology. Scientists are trying to determine the density of the particles that form it, since the role of its gravitational force in the future evolution of the universe depends on it. A future which scientists say may entail the collapse of all matter, or its perpetual expansion. Dark matter is also very important because it determines the fate of the universe. Everything in the universe exerts a gravitational pull on everything else, and if there was sufficient dark matter, then the cosmic expansion would eventually halt and the universe would recollapse to a big crunch where everything would be destroyed. It's now clear that there is not enough dark matter to halt the expansion of the universe and that the universe will go on expanding forever, probably even at an accelerating rate. So the long-term forecast for the universe is that it will become ever emptier, ever colder, but it'll go on expanding forever. The stars will all die out and become more dilute, but the expansion will continue forever.
In January of 1999, the biggest cosmic explosion detected to date by human telescopes took place. At 7 billion light years, a hypernova was observed, a hyperexplosion whose magnitude has been established in terms of the brilliance observed from Earth. If that brilliance is more or less similar to that of the galaxy where it is produced, it's a supernova or exploding star. But if it's much greater, it's called a hypernova. It's not known whether the glow in 1999 was due to two galaxies interacting or whether it was a process of intense star formation, but it's hard to imagine the energy it liberated, equivalent to some 30,000 quintillion atomic bombs like the one that fell on Hiroshima. By capturing these phenomena, Modern astronomy offers a very different image of the sky from that ideal view of a peaceful heaven illuminated by lights that reflect the constancy of eternity. But the universe is not infinite, nor is it timeless as was traditionally thought. But rather, it had a beginning, and it could have an end one day. Its history is, above all, a record of violent episodes, since only through the conflict and collapse of cosmic matter has the interstellar medium been able to form. When a very massive star collapses on itself and explodes in the form of a supernova, or when cosmic explosions of gamma rays take place, they are moments of creation in the cosmos, moments in which the universe is regenerated with the elements that make way for the birth of new matter. Cosmic violence can reach unfathomable limits, however, such as when everything, matter, energy, and light, disappears, swallowed up by the most disconcerting phenomenon of galactic anatomy yet, black holes. The concept of the black hole was already anticipated at the end of the 18th century by the astronomer Laplace, who posited the possible existence of an object so dense as not to let anything escape from it, not even light. From there the name black hole. The theoretical mathematical formulation of the black hole was generated in the 20th century and states that when a star of enormous volume exhausts its fuel and dies, the force of gravity inside of it pulls towards itself, thereby provoking a total collapse and becoming a black hole. It's a region of space with a gravitational force so strong that it provokes a strong curve in space-time. For physicists, a black hole is the greatest singularity of space. That's to say, one of those phenomena in which the laws of physics do not have effect. The matter trapped by the gravity of a black hole begins to revolve around it, forming a flat structure of gas called the accretion disk. The quantity of matter that falls is so great that it doesn't have time to cross the surface of the black hole and disappear. It accumulates in the surroundings, waiting in line to be devoured. This is the border region that marks the limit from which nothing can escape that infinite unknown. It's called the event horizon, and it's the zone in which, if we could detect how matter falls towards the center of a black hole, we would see its image frozen just before it disappears, since we could no longer follow its trace when not even the light that illuminates it escapes being trapped. That is where we lose track of the light, the cosmic messenger that, thanks to telescopes, allows us to observe the universe.